Okay, on to the break-in procedure. As outlined by the manual, you'll be running the lathe in all six speeds for 10 minutes. First, I remove the bolt to uh, be able to swing open that rear inspection cover, and that gets you access to the pulleys and gears. The bolt is uh, Allen head takes a 5mm Allen wrench, and then the same 5mm Allen wrench to remove or actually just loosen these two chuck hold-down keys. I'm not really sure what they're called, but I'm going to call them hold-down keys because it makes the most sense to me. To remove the chuck, you'll take your two chuck keys and rem and uh, work them against each other. There's a collar right behind the, the chuck, and a lot of people seem to not be able to break theirs loose. Mine, as you can see here, came loose without a whole lot of effort. So uh, I'll show you what you can do if this method doesn't work because you can end up wallowing out the hole on the spindle uh, and possibly damaging your, your chuck if you're not careful. So afterwards, uh, we go ahead and just remove these two 5mm Allen bolts and you can see the little uh, key or chuck bracket or chuck hold down or whatever you want to call it. And those come right off, no problem. Uh, if you're not able to use the two chuck key method, get an adjustable wrench and you can insert this on the jaw. This is the way I think Crevice Reamer did it and uh, if you hang out on CNC Zone you can probably find his write up. Uh, pipe wrench on these two rear spanner nuts is where you'll work from the back side and make sure you don't use those make sure you don't use your pipe wrench on the pulley or on the chuck, but those two spanner nuts, if they get a couple little nicks in them from your pipe wrench, it's not a big deal. You might want to lay a board down uh, if you're if you're nervous about dropping the chuck on the ways. You definitely don't want to ding up those ways, but I just went slow and not a problem. Uh, there it is next to the four jaw chuck, which is much heavier and just seems super beefy. And before I decided to break in, I also wanted to remove the... Uh, the follow rest, this takes a 6mm Allen wrench, and the steady rest, which is neither a 17 nor 19mm uh, end wrench, but the 19 will work if it's not on there very tight. Mine was on there uh, pretty loosely. so uh, I'm not planning on using either of these because I just think that for my you know initial playing with the lathe, they're not really going to be that important. So... That's why I'm removing them. Uh, also, it's easier to clean them if you remove them. So if you think you might use them, you could probably clean them while they're still on the lathe. But uh, for me, it's just better to get, get them out of the way. Now, with your manual, you're going to get uh, an inspection record and a packing list. Uh, this is what the packing list looks like. Everything that came in the crate. And I actually didn't look mine over. Uh, I just actually didn't even realize I had it until I had gotten to this part of the video. So I wanted to show it to you for fun, and the inspection record basically tells you what tolerances uh, were measured on your machine at the factory. And I haven't read over mine, um, but the numbers don't look impressive as I'm watching this. Uh, you know, 10 thousandths, 10, 20, yeah, not great, but... Uh, you know, hopefully with some upgrades and some good adjustment, these tolerances can be tightened up a little bit. And I'm brand new to machining, so really anything within, you know, a few thousandths is probably going to feel pretty good. <laughs> because I'm used to, uh, you know, eyeballing it with a ruler. Anyway, uh, next we need to set the speeds, and we're going to start out in the slowest one, which is BC1. That chart is on the front of your machine. But this diagram just labels which pulley is A, B, and C for your reference. And the machine comes in the lowest of the high-speed uh, pulley sets. So what we have to do is install the other pulley belt, which you can see right here. This one goes between the top two pulleys, and that will get you into the low gears, if you will. So to remove the belt, there's no tensioner for the uh, high speeds. So what I like to do is just twist the belt a little bit and then roll the pulley and you should be able to get it off. You, know, you if you've never done this before, you'll you know, you might pinch your fingers a couple of times, you know, it's just be careful. So once I get this belt off right here, uh, I'll go ahead and install the other belt for the top pulleys. And there is a tensioner for these two pulleys. However, I was able to get the first two speeds without adjusting that tensioner. And I'll show you a little bit more about the tensioner here in just a second. But 
Uh, same procedure, just kind of twist and roll it on there. Uh, no big deal. It doesn't have to be super tight. The machine uh, doesn't seem to care if it's if it's not super tight. And you want to make sure the carriage is disengaged from the lead screw by moving the half nut lever in the up position. And set the speed to forward, or the uh, motion to forward, which is that black switch next to the green button. And here we are at, let's see, I think the lowest speed is 150 RPM. So this is what it looks like from behind. Oh, so exciting. And here it is at the chuck. Let's see that chuck. Apparently not. Oh, this is the oil level uh, indicator. You can see through this window how much oil you have. And after running through the six speeds, you'll want to change that. There's your 150 RPM. Okay, so to quickly remove uh, the belt and go into the second speed, twist and roll procedure, not a problem. You'll need to twist the uh, shutoff button, and you'll notice when I twist it, it pops out. There you go. Now you can re-engage the drive by pushing the green button. And speed number two is 300 RPM. Here it is at the chuck. All right, moving right along, we're going to go up to 720 RPM. Now here I needed to remove the tensioner, and there are two there are two nuts on the tensioner. There's one in the front and one in the back. Uh, this is the one the one in the back that you actually need to remove. This one in the front, which you can see I have already loosened, does nothing but serve to confuse me. And uh, the one in the back will actually break it loose and allow you to remove it. And then I went ahead and cleaned mine up. And this also allowed me to clean up the back of the lathe a little bit. Uh, I think this whole break-in procedure probably took me two, two and a half hours because I was cleaning the accessories and then filming, you know, takes a little bit of time. But So here we are in uh, third gear, third speed if you prefer. This is, I think, 550 RPM. And there it is at the chuck. And when you're doing this, you're going to be listening for loud noises, squills, grinding, anything that sounds uh, bad. And I didn't have any problems. Everything seemed just fine with mine. So moving into the high-speed sets, starting out at 720 RPM, I believe. This is the most fascinating video you've ever seen. The 1200 RPM speed seems a little bit fast to me. It makes me uncomfortable just watching it. I'm not sure if I would ever machine at this speed. There may be times when it's applicable. And the highest speed is 2400 RPM, which just seems scary fast. It, it takes the machine a couple of seconds actually to get there. Uh, and I would I would have included the audio, but I had my uh, propane heater going right next to me, and it's so loud you couldn't really hear the light anyway. But that's what 2400 RPM looks like. Anyway, thanks for checking out my video. Don't forget to tune in next time when we delve into the exciting world of lathe cleaning.